that yeah. is. I mean, look at us on side by about ten yards. But anyway, it's a great shot. It's a great <laughs> shot. To, it's a great shot to have of yourself. Joe, Aoife, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. We're here to talk about the 30th anniversary of the first ever Ireland Women's International. Joe, we might start with you. How did you get into rugby in the first place? Uh, well, for me, I grew up in a rugby household. My father uh, was a member here in Black Rock, uh, as was my brother. And I grew up watching the Six Nations at home on television. Uh, I always had an interest in rugby, but uh, I suppose never realized that we could actually play rugby until uh, I was away traveling, came back and Nicola Doyle, or Nicola Elliott at the time, or, uh, she uh, came over to our house. She was a very good friend of my sister's and she convinced me uh, to come down here one day just to, to try it rugby because they needed players. I loved it. From that day onwards, I, it was rugby is what I wanted to play. I'm from Limerick, first of all. So if you're from Limerick, you usually have a fondness for the game of rugby and I went to the Crescent College Comprehensive and rugby was played there but by the boys at the time which was fine, I didn't know any different, supported uh, all the teams up through school, um, would have played if I had had the opportunity if there was anything going on but just you know it just wasn't there and um, came to Dublin, was working in a school here in Black Rock and um, I used to go down, there was a little tiny grocers in Black Rock and I'd get my lunch there every day the woman who worked in the grocers was chatting one afternoon and uh, she said to the person, she was serving another woman, and she said, oh my daughter, my daughter is just so stiff and sore from the rugby. I thought, I, must, I mustn't have heard that right, but anyway, sure, whatever, let the customer go and then when the shop was quiet I said, did you mean your daughter or your son? And she said, my daughter, and her daughter was Deborah Byrne. Uh, who was playing for Black Rock at the time and that, I think that was a Tuesday or a Wednesday and the following Friday I, Deborah picked me up in Black Rock I arrived, just got out of the car and Joanne was sitting lacing her boots. So talk to us then about the, the, the first international. How did that come about? Was there a trial? How did you get picked? What happened? Well, 30 years ago, it's a long way away, I think I can speak for both of us. We both had only just started playing rugby, so it was quite new. I think we had some good skill sets that obviously caught the attention of a few people, and we're, we're thinking that because women's rugby kind of and the IWFU started kind of in Black Rock with the assistance of Jill Henderson and a few others, that uh, it was kind of communicated to us that you were invited up to Cook, and I think it was in January of 1993 for a trial. That's the January of the match in February. Okay, yeah. the trial. So I remember we got a bus up and uh, I, I remember George Hook was there on the bus. I think he was helping with selection. I'm trying to remember the bus was there at the time. But I do remember the trial match. There was a number of uh, Irish uh, people living in Ireland uh, were invited to it. So the match was uh, a trial match. They were swapping people in and out as far as I remember. It was absolutely freezing. I think the hailstones were coming down sideways. Um, and it's freezing, but then they announced the team there and then, uh, the squad, should I say, and uh, thankfully, I'm very privileged that we were selected for that. Uh, the memory of the day, I do remember um, we flew over. I have no recollection of how we got to the accommodation. I think we made our own way. Um, I remember we went, we all met in the hotel. Now there was a small group of us and we kind of stuck together because we didn't know anybody else. We didn't know, everybody else seemed to kind of know each other a little bit. But my recollection of actually meeting everybody is we were sitting in this B&B um, on a stairwell. It was kind of a spiral staircase and everybody was sitting there and you had to give your name, where you were from and what position you played. And that was what we do. That's our introduction. There was no training. We had no training session, I suppose, if you think of the, the initial trial for selection was in January. It was February was the, yeah. was the match. So there was no time for a training session. So I suppose we sat and we... Yeah, I, 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 come, I absolutely have the same memory. It was a, a lovely Scottish woman ran the BMB. She was so kind. She was fielding calls from Ireland. And, you know, pa parents and friends were ringing and leaving messages for us. And we were all sitting on that spiral staircase I'm Aoife, I play full back. I'm Joanne, I play out half. And so on, through all the positions. And, uh, you know, moves. I mean, moves we literally ran through in the dressing room before yeah. we went out onto the pitch. It was, it was quite 
literally, what is your name, what position do you play? The night before the interview. Yeah. But then yeah. there's one memory that stands out because that lovely Scottish lady in that b, &B I, I don't remember the name of the place, was coming out, was looking for Oinka Rogers. Couldn't pronounce <laughs> Aoife. So Oinka yeah. Rogers, so that has stuck since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember in the changing room, Elaine was trying to, to, to give us a little sense of, okay, this, this might be good, this might be a good way to start. A little bit on positions, I would say, a minor move or two, possibly from the girls over in England who played together already. Mm. But before we left the change room, he said, enjoy it. And I actually always remember that. He said, enjoy this, this is special. Did you enjoy it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thinking back, right? I mean, the, everything that you went through, and we're going to take a look in a, in a minute at some of the pictures and the jerseys and things like that. Mm -hmm. What would you change? Would you do it all again? I, uh, personally, I would do it all again, start to finish, and I, I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, we struggled with money issues, we struggled with being on a back pitch, not having a hot shower, we struggled with all of those things. I wouldn't change a thing. It was an absolute pleasure, privilege and honour all the way through. Not without challenges and difficulties, but time, time of my life. Yeah, absolutely privileged to be able to be part of that. Uh, lucky enough to be, have been there at the right time, at the right moment and having the huge support because all we wanted to do was play rugby. Mm. I didn't care if I had to buy a new pair of shoes or you know, pay for your flights or fundraising. I don't know how many race nights we did over the last 30 years to raise funds. So they're kind of rather large and uh, heavy cotton. So good, in, good in the rain. Perfect good in for the that mud. good Edinburgh weather. Yeah. yeah. On the 25th anniversary, the IRFU um, organised all, and invited all those past players to a reception in the Aviva, which was to uh, for the presentation of the, the caps. Yeah. And they did it so well. They had every table was a year of somebody who had played an international match and everybody was brought up. There's, there's a fantastic image that will never leave me of 112 caps sitting on a table it's stunning just it's just looking at that um, and they kept the 1993 to the very very end where they then yeah, made they worked it backwards they, they worked, worked back backwards. from 2005 to 1993 and it's really what stood out to me in of the 112 people that had received a cap i think 102 people turned up or 107 people turned up there was three people who couldn't travel and there was sadly two people who had passed passed away um during that time, but it was a phenomenal turnout. Yeah. People came from New Zealand, Canada, the States. Yeah, it, it was, was it was the most memorable day, I think, for me. And I think it, it epitomized everything about what we've done all the way through in, in women's rugby and um, people getting recognized for all their hard work behind the scenes as well. So this, this just to say, sorry, Joanne, for cutting across you, but this is the, um, this is the cap that we all received that day from the IRFU um, at the caps ceremony it's yeah. been called. Um, so much hard work went on behind the scenes to make that happen again. And you know, so many people just working tirelessly. Uh, but my God, that was a day to remember. Yeah.